I hope you're all doing well. So in today's video, I wanted to talk all about my vintage Gucci Diana tote. So if you watch any of my previous videos, you would have seen that I was on a little bit of a handbag shopping frenzy and over the duration of about two weeks, I purchased four vintage designer handbags. So I've unboxed them all on my channel and I've been using them as much as I can. Um, but in terms of the Gucci Diana tote, Ever since I cleaned it up and restored it, I have been, have been using it every day for work. So it's probably been just over a week now. Um, and I just wanted to show you guys some features of the bag if you're looking to get one, what I like to keep in my bag for work and also how I've been styling it. So when I was searching this bag, it was almost impossible to try and find videos on it. There really were not many. And it, I'm quite surprised by that because it is a re-edition. They've obviously created the new um, Gucci Diana tote. So I would have thought that this bag, you, you know, would be a trending bag, almost like the Christian Dior saddle bag or something like that. I would have thought that people would be looking at them more. But honestly, it is so hard to find videos on YouTube. So I knew that when I purchased this bag and I'd used it for a bit, I really wanted to create a video on it because I think it deserves it. And obviously in maybe a year's time, once I've really used the bag and gotten to know it, I'll do an in-depth review. But I thought for this video, I could just run through a little bit about the bag, how I'm finding it at the moment. And then, yeah, like I said, how I've been styling it. So if you are new to my channel, welcome. Very happy to have you here. We like to talk all things, not only vintage designer handbags, but also capsule wardrobes, sustainable fashion, and then a little bit of organization and stuff is thrown in there as well. So if you want to join our little community, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And yeah, there's a lot more videos coming from me. I pretty much upload twice a week. So without further ado, let's just get straight into the video and let's talk all about the bag itself. So because this was a vintage bag, it didn't actually come with its dust bag, um, which is pretty much expected when you're buying vintage bags. It's very rare that they come with like their box or a dust bag. This one, actually our do not insert on our bed came in this. It's like a bamboo um, bag. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's a perfect dust bag for my bags. So I have been using this to keep the bag in. And guys, this bag has been on a journey. Again, um, those who watch all of my videos and keep up with um, my content, you would have seen the journey that this has been on. But basically, when I received the bag, it was impeccable condition. Um, see how there's a little bit of warping to the leather? Not super happy about that, but you live and you learn. You try, it's all trial and error. And obviously, next time I um, remove the stickiness from a bag, I really, oh, I'm kicking myself because I knew, I knew that. I've done it once before. I knew that getting leather wet does tend to warp it. So um, I should have just been a bit more careful. But I don't know, after like three hours of scrubbing, I was kind of rushing through. But anyway, guys, when I received this bag, it was absolutely perfect condition. There was no warping at all on the outside and it looked exactly like this, um, but obviously a little bit better. And then on the inside, you couldn't even put your hand inside and bring it out with it, your hand being covered in this black sticky residue. I've never seen anything like it. I have repaired Gucci bags before, but it was more of a dusty kind of um, disintegration. But this one was completely sticky. It was almost like when you remove a sticker from something and that stickiness is left, it was like that. So anyway, it was covered every part of the inside of the bag. It was black on the inside, as you can see now it is gray, but it was originally black. And I was like, I'm going to attempt to remove it because I know that this does happen with Gucci bags. And I know a lot of people have been watching my previous video and said that, you know, that's a huge red flag that there was so much stickiness going on. Are you sure it's authentic? So first of all, I have had the bag authenticated and it is authentic. Second of all, it is quite common in a lot of vintage Gucci bags, not just the Gucci Diana tote. And that's why some vintage Gucci handbags have the disintegration and others don't. It's because they've just been stored differently. So as unfortunate as it is for a lot of people, 
Um, for me, it's a huge opportunity because you can grab an absolute bargain and if you are willing to take the risk and you're happy to put a lot of work in and repair it yourself, well then it's a win-win situation. So for me personally, I picked up this bag for $300 from a Japanese seller. There is no way that you would be able to buy this bag for $300 unless it had that issue going on. Um, if you do, congrats to you. But whenever I was looking on the pre-love market, any that did not have the disintegrating interior, they were up around the $1,000 mark. So anyway, I took a risk. I looked up some YouTube videos on how to remove stickiness. I was able to remove every sign of stickiness within this bag. So if you are someone who is looking to purchase a Gucci bag and it has sticky residue on the inside, I'll leave that um, video linked up here or down below and you can go ahead and watch that because I run through exactly how I did it. So anyway, the bag is all clean. This is what it looks like. I really do like, usually I quite like having my work bags completely open because it's just for usability I can just throw things into them but I know for a lot of people they do like the extra security and this flap is very very easy to use and it does give that little bit of extra security so you just have the clip closure like that once you open it there is the inside of the bag um, I if I had it my way I wouldn't have a pocket sitting right down the middle I find it's makes it harder to use. Although in saying that the last couple of weeks I have been using this bag for work and it is handy um, to have that there because obviously I keep all of my little things in there and there's no need for me to kind of have a catch-all in my bag. So down one side, I'll show you how I organize it um, when I get to that part. So anyway, that's the inside of the bag. Again, you've got a pocket down here. Um, you've got the Gucci tag there, which is still in beautiful condition and was not affected by um, me cleaning the bag. And then and the zips also have these little gold kind of pull um, tags which are really cute so that is the inside of the bag and then as for the outside it's pretty self-explanatory um, it is how it looks there's not a lot of detail to it you've got the feet on the bottom which are amazing I don't know why every bag does not have feet on the bottom. I wish my Louis Vuitton Noe bags or any work bag for that matter had feet on the bottom. I know I could probably try and install them myself but I'm a little bit scared to do that kind of stuff. So anyway, huge plus for me by having these on the bottom because it just protects the leather. And then as for the bamboo handles, now when I received the bag, these handles have a tendency to over time push out this way which causes a lot of tension on the leather part of the bag here and that is why when you see the re-edition of this bag they have these straps or belts here they're called a handle shaper I think now I did look on Gucci to purchase them for this bag but they are $500 for two so I jumped onto eBay and I purchased two leather dog collars with gold hardware and they work a treat I do need to remove this second loop the only reason it has that second loop is obviously because it's designed as a dog collar but on the Gucci ones they don't have that they just have the one kind of belt buckle kind of here so I do plan to remove that I'll link these below as well guys because I think they're around five dollars each and I actually like it it does add another element of hardware to the bag um, because obviously you've got the gold hardware here but there's not a lot of it so it really matches the bag well I'm so happy with how it turned out and I don't think it ruins the look of the bag at all so that is just a little bit of an affordable hack when you're dealing with these bamboo handles so they are the features of the bag I hope I was descriptive enough for you guys if you wanted to know anything else please just leave a question in the comments below um, and I will say since using it um, I just hold it like this or in the crook of my arm and one thing I've noticed I would rather hold it like this because sometimes when you have it in the crook of your arm it can and you're walking it can pinch so yeah just the two bamboo handles as they move it can kind of pinch your skin the other thing I will mention is it is quite heavy and obviously it's a really thick sturdy structured leather you've got the bamboo handles and you've got some nice solid hardware and then feet on the bottom and then also for you've got this extra flap here that's quite heavy in itself and then you've got the insert with um, you know the zip compartment stuff so that's just something that I've noticed when using this bag and I never understood that question people used to leave questions in the comments saying oh is the bag heavy and I used to think to myself what kind of question is that it really depends on what you put inside the bag if you put bricks inside the bag it's going to be heavy if you put you know a t-shirt in the bag it's going to be light but now I fully understand that question total rookie error but um, if I compare this to my Louis Vuitton Noe which obviously would fit the same 
same amount it's another large bucket bag um, this would be way heavier because the materials used in the bag so I completely understand that question and yes I would say that this is a heavier kind of bag but to be honest I really don't mind it because it's a stylish one and if I am looking to really elevate an outfit and dress it up I would go for this bag if I am running errands and really just want to get things done and hold a lot of stuff I would probably opt for my um, Louis Vuitton Noé bag so I guess now I'll show you exactly what fits inside the bag and how I've been using it the past couple of weeks now I do not take my MacBook to work but I do always like to show you guys what kind of fits in a bag because I know some of you would like to know if your laptop would fit so this is a MacBook Pro and it is the 13 inch now um, it does not fit sideways like this at all but if you were to slide it in this way it would stick out the top so you know if need be and you had to go somewhere you could definitely carry your MacBook like that and actually this um, strap kind of covers it a little bit so you would have to leave this black part open so I wouldn't say that it fits but I think an 11 inch MacBook would slide in there quite nicely and fit well um, same goes for an iPad I have an iPad here this that the iPad slips in sideways and fits in perfectly but as soon as you go to more of like a 13 inch size it does stick out the top so I don't actually carry that in my bag ever but I just thought I would show you guys in case um, some of you were wondering so the first item I like to put into my bag is my planner I am loving this if you've watched my planner related videos you would know that I purchased this at the beginning of this year and I have just been loving sitting down planning pretty much every single day and I've just been so much more organized and I feel so much more productive by having this in my life so this is the beautiful croc black leather a5 planner from cloth and paper yes from cloth and paper in this planner I did actually create my own dashboards so when you open it um, I've just got some papers slipped there I need to actually get rid of those but see there that is my vision board for 2023 and I turned it into a dashboard if you're wondering how I created those I will link that video up here or down below um, because I run through exactly how I create my own dashboards so I'm absolutely loving this I take it with me everywhere um, and yeah I just don't leave the house without it so it is imperative for me that this fits into my work bag because obviously I use it at work all the time and I take it with me everywhere and it fits in this bag like a glove I just slide it in like this and drop it down so I keep it on one side and that is all I keep in on that side um, I am looking to purchase like a little pencil case for um, like white out highlighters and stuff like that because I do have a pencil case but it's quite large I need to just have a little one that just fits a couple of things and it would probably sit nicely next to the planner down that side so on this side down here I keep all the things that I reach for most so I keep things like my sunglasses these are the Saint Laurent Betty sunglasses my ride or die um, very very comfortable they go with every single outfit and they're very minimal branding which I love they're beautiful quality they're very comfortable um, but again they're very understated so I keep those down the side there the next thing I like to keep in my bag is my wallet this is a vintage Chanel coin purse I think it's called I purchased this again from from eBay from a Japanese seller and I think I did film an unboxing of this guys anything that you see I've probably filmed a video on it so if you're wondering about this wallet or anything else you see um, that is in my bag I've definitely 100% filmed either an unboxing or some kind of video on it so absolutely love this the reason I love this so much is not only is it the cutest thing ever but it can fit coins so you just I have all of my cards my most used cards go in the front little kind of slot there and then my least used cards all sort of sit at the back here and then I can also fit some coins and money in there so it's honestly the best little purse and I ended up purchasing that one for I think 150 Australian dollars so I use this every single day I do have my bank cards on my phone but I'm a little bit old school like that I do use it if I don't have my wallet with me but if I am going to pay for something and I have my purse with me, I will always use my actual physical card. The next item is this Louis Vuitton 4 key holder. So it holds all of my little keys and just um, stops anything in my bag getting scratched. And then I just 
keep my car key hanging out. Now, in terms of my car, I've had my car for like over five years. I It's only my second car. I would love to have a beautiful new car. Um, but at the moment where we live, we don't have a garage because we converted it into more living space. So I don't really want to get a new car and have it sitting outside. So if we get another house or I we get a carport or anything, I can tell you now, the moment we have that, I will be getting a new car. But at this stage, I just have my little 2012 Mazda 3. It serves me well, but yeah, I'm kind of and getting to the point where I'm like, oh, I wouldn't mind a new car. Like, my car doesn't even have Bluetooth or anything. So, and it's still a manual. So I would love an auto car, something with Apple CarPlay. And yeah, I can see myself getting a new one in the next couple of years. I would love to film like what's in my car videos, how I organize my car, a car tour, but I just can't do anything like that because my car is so old and just nothing special. So anyway, they are my car keys. Next thing I keep in my bag is some chewing gum. These are the extra spearmint ones and they're sugar free. I love these. I always get this size um, kind of packet because they last a really long time and they sit in my bag really well. I find when I get the little packets, they kind of just go missing and they, the box kind of gets all warped and I'm just worried that the um, chewing gum might melt or something in my bag. So I always reach for these ones. I also have some moisturizer. This is the Sol de Janeiro um, moisturizer and it's just the smaller tub. I bought the smaller tub um, one because I wanted to try it out but two because that way I can keep it in my bag. I don't know about you guys but sometimes I sit at work at my desk and I'll be wearing a dress or something and I'll look at my legs and I'll be like oh my god they need to be moisturized. There's honestly nothing worse than that feeling of like looking around there's no moisturizer and you just feel kind of a bit self-conscious for the rest of the day. So anyway I always keep moisturizer with me in my bag so that goes in there. I then obviously keep my phone in my bag. This is the iPhone 13 Pro I think um, and it's a beautiful the daily edited it's called case. It's like a leather case with my initial on the bottom there and the case actually matches my airpods as well my airpods are beside my bed right now um, with my ipad because i was watching youtube last night so i always have my airpods in here as well i just can't be bothered to get up and go and get them we also have this chanel hand cream um i have been using this a lot lately i did say in one of my videos i don't use it that often because i kind of want to savor it but lately i've been using it a lot and it is so beautiful and hydrating and just smells really luxurious so I absolutely love this. I also keep this little Lady Jane purple hairbrush in my bag. To be honest, I don't actually use it that much because if I brush my hair, if I was to brush it now, it'll go quite frizzy. So yeah, I just thought it was cute. Purple is my favorite color. I don't ever wear purple, but in terms of like accessories and stuff, I think it's so cute. Um, and I just thought it was really cute as like a handbag you know, accessory, but yeah, I don't actually really use it, but yeah, you never know. So I'll always keep it in there. And the last thing to go in this section of the bag is this Dior roll on perfume. Um, it is so beautiful. It has lasted me a lifetime and it just smells really good. It's great for daytime and nighttime, but yeah, I just always keep that in my bag. It doesn't leak and it's just good to have on hand. So that is everything on that side of the bag. So they're all the more bulkier things, things that I kind of reach for. And then in the middle part, in the zipper, this is where I keep all of my little bits that I would usually keep in a catch-all. So I used to use my Louis Vuitton pochette as a bit of a catch-all in my bag. I then sold it. And when I'm using my other bags, I use this. This is from the Daily Edited. My friend actually purchased this for me for my 21st, so years ago, but it really is a great little catch-all for all of my bags. But for this one, I find I don't need to use it. So that's usually what I use. So this middle pocket has come in handy. And what I keep in here, I have this little plastic um, pouch thing. It's just got a couple of hair ties, a couple of bobby pins, and two tampons. If that ain't emergency kit, I don't know what is. So I always have those on hand and always make sure it's restocked just in case of an emergency. The next thing is an iPhone cord. This is a little bit of an old school one, um, and I just use a hair tie to kind of bundle it up. I really need to get one of those cord kind of organizer things. But anyway, I just keep that in my bag. I don't leave my house without an iPhone cord because it's not really my phone that dies. If my AirPods are dead and I'm at work, oh my gosh, it is a long day. I then have some lip products. These are some of my favorites. This is a Chanel lip balm. Um, it's just clear and it's just quite nice. To be honest, I don't actually use it too much. 
Um, I use this one the most. It is the Rituals Lip Balm. My friend Lou sent me this in a box swap. Um, and it's just like my favorite lip balm and then this one is one from the body shop and it has a little bit of color to it it has like a purpley tinge yeah such a beautiful color it really is kind of my lips but better my natural lip color has like a purpley kind of undertone so I find this one looks really nice and just add some color without making it look like I've got lipstick on so anyway I keep all three of those in there and the last two things I keep in there is a highlighter and also some white out so this is a cute little paper mate one perfect for your handbag um, so I keep that in there and then also this beautiful it's like a peachy kind of color highlighter it's got a thicker tip on one end and a um, thinner on the other and I use these for my planner so those I just keep in that middle pocket so guys that is everything I keep in my work bag and I can't ever see this bag leaving my collection I think it's classic I think it's timeless and especially because Lady Diana wore it um, so iconic and I just think if you've watched any of my previous videos or you follow me on Instagram, you would know that I am a sucker for buying a vintage bag, trialing it out. And if I find that I'm not reaching for it much or it doesn't really go with my style, I will definitely sell it on. Um, but this one, yeah, I can see myself keeping this for a long time. So now that the bag is full and all organized, I wanted to show you guys how I would style it. I've obviously just been wearing the bag to work because that is my lifestyle and that is how I use the bag. But there is that iconic photo of Lady Diana using this bag and wearing active wear and I thought it looked so cool that I really wanted to try it out. So let's get straight into styling this bag. So I am just wearing this baggy jumper. I actually purchased this from Gander like a couple of years ago. It's just a store in Australia, a bit of a fast fashion store. I never thought that I would wear it much, but as I've worn it and washed it, it's gone this more kind of vintagey washed look, which I actually really like. And I find that I wear this so much when I'm dog walking um, Remy in the winter. So anyway, I've popped that on. Underneath I have my YSL baggy t-shirt. I purchased this one from Depop again a couple of years ago. How's me? I'm like bending down. Um, but anyway, I actually find I wear this a lot when I'm exercising because it covers your bum. It makes you feel it's very cool, lightweight, very breezy. Um, and I know I'm working out in YSL, but I just found that styling it up, it was a little bit too baggy for me. So anyway, that's how I like to wear it. And then I've also got on these Lululemon leggings. They are the seven eights, so they come to about here. Um, and then I usually pair them with um, socks like this and I'm wearing my New Balance 530s. So this is the outfit, what do we think? Um, I don't know if you guys can see me full length, but anyway, um, absolutely love this outfit. I feel very, very comfortable, perfect if you're running errands. For me personally, I can't ever see myself wearing an outfit like this with a bag like this um, because it just doesn't really suit my lifestyle. But if I was someone who worked for myself and I wanted to head to a local cafe to do some work on my laptop, this is the kind of outfit I would be wearing. I wish that was my life and I hope one day it is, but I feel as though it's the perfect outfit. You're running errands, but you've got work to do. And I can assure you, I'll be looking for any opportunity I can to wear this exact outfit. So that is number one. Let me know what you think in the comments below. There will be three outfits, so rate your favorite, one, two, or three. So outfit number two, you're probably looking at me going, why is she wearing that? Why, why the vest? Why the jeans? Why the boots? Um, that is because one, I'm just getting way too excited for like winter fashion and it's only just come into autumn and autumn here in Australia is basically summer for everywhere else. But also because Ryan and I go to New Zealand in July and it'll be winter, it'll be snowing and all I can think about are winter outfits at the moment. So I picked up this vest the other day from Cotton On. It was out the front, I was walking past and it was on their clearance rack and I saw the colour and I saw the quilting and I immediately fell in love. I walked up to it, I think it was $20 or $30. So I picked it up and I have just paired it with this Glassons, uh, no, it's Dish. Dish long sleeve shirt and then I have these creamy white sort of long jeans. Um, they're high waisted and they have a slit up the side and then I've paired it with boots. So this is the outfit with the bag. I actually really love slit jeans with boots. I think it looks really cool. Now if you didn't like the vest I've just taken it off because this is a completely different outfit again. This is something I could definitely wear to work as well throughout the winter. It's just a black long sleeve, the nice 
long jeans with the boots and the bag. So yeah, that's definitely another option. I just wasn't sure if that was a little bit too boring for you guys. I mean, this is definitely something I would wear to work for sure, but I just thought the vest added another little element and a little more depth to the outfit. So that is outfit number two. Now onto the third outfit. So if Shannon was an outfit, this would be it. I wear this all the time throughout the winter. Whenever I can get away with the blazer, this is the outfit I go for. So I have this friend of Audrey blazer. I got it off Depop um, at a really, really good price and it's absolutely beautiful. It's quite fitted on the arms, but then like the boxy boyfriend sort of shape and it's the perfect length. I absolutely love it. I then just have a white tank top on. I think this is one from Glassons or Dish, one of those places. Then I've paired them with these Zara Mum jeans, a beautiful light wash blue. I wear them all the time. I've probably had these for about four years. So I always want to link them for you guys because I get a lot of questions on them, but they're no longer available. They do have a mum jean that's very similar. So I'll link that one below. And then I'm wearing these Charles and Keith loafers. Again, I got these off Depop. Pretty much everything of mine is secondhand, but I really, really love them. They're really good quality and they're not too chunky. I wanted a chunky loafer, but also not too extreme. This is what the outfit looks like with the bag. What do we think? I absolutely love it. I'll definitely be wearing this throughout winter, I can assure you. So make sure you follow me on Instagram because I usually do my outfit of the days over there. But yeah, I absolutely love this outfit. I feel very comfortable in it. It's not too much, um, but it's still kind of sophisticated. Whenever I'm wearing blazers or anything like that that really dress up an outfit, I like to casual it down with jeans and stuff. And luckily I have a workplace where we can get away with blue jeans and stuff. So absolutely love this outfit, love the bag. And oh my gosh, it's just going to elevate every work outfit I've put together, I know it. So that's the third outfit, let me know what you think. So that will bring us to the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I enjoyed filming it. Um, if you want to know anything more about this bag, please don't hesitate in leaving a question in the comments below and I'll be sure to get back to you. And if you guys have any video suggestions and what you would like to see from me, make sure you leave that in the comments below. I definitely have some more wardrobe fashion related videos on the way. I am just adding a few more pieces to my wardrobe before I go ahead and film those. But I hope you have a lovely day or night, depending on where you are in the world, what time you're watching this. And I'll catch you guys in my next video. Video. Bye guys.